viewing this, you may look twice at the car next to you on your next drive down the highway. We've received intelligence which indicate that there's heroin, fentanyl, methamphetamine, cocaine, and marijuana traveling north and south on Highway 277. Also, 180 runs east and west, and we understand that they're using 180 as well. These rural roads serve as a major thoroughfare for traffickers hoping to avoid law enforcement on I-20, and Chief Dan Graziosi of the Anson Police Department describes how advancements in technology have aided them when dealing with fentanyl. Just the way we search cars has changed since fentanyl has really become prevalent. There's one on each side. There are high-speed license plate readers. I can pick up anything going 80 miles an hour over my speed. On average, we're reading anywhere from 3,300 plates to 10,000 plates a day. And they can be entered by Border Patrol, and they can put in suspected drug smugglers, people that have had previous encounters as drug mules or, or known drug couriers. Um, that information can be put into the LPR, and the LPR alerts the officer that they've encountered that car. Officer Cole Rutherford of Anson PD allowed us the opportunity to ride along with him on his nightly patrol where he describes not only how dangerous fentanyl is to consume. What do you think whenever you're handling this kind of stuff? Oh, I mean, it's scary. It's scary every time. It's, it's a silent killer. That's, that's the best way to describe it because you never know. And you don't know. You could be driving down the road and accidentally touch your face with your hand and you're exposed to it. From the street, to the courtroom. Fentanyl's been around forever. The problem is that fentanyl is touching the criminal community in a way that no other drug has ever touched in my years of experience. Taylor County District Attorney James Hicks knows all too well the reach this deadly drug has when dealing with it in the courtroom. Fentanyl is affecting all of the uh, uh, domestic violence situation. And we're dealing with families that are being destroyed because of drugs, opioids, and fentanyl specifically. Meanwhile, Texas House Bill 6, which went into law last September, gives prosecutors like Hicks more teeth when going after fentanyl dealers. If a dealer deals someone that ingests or, or introduces fentanyl into their body and dies, we can go after the dealer for murder. That, that is a perfect example of how fentanyl has gone beyond just the drug statute. Although DA's offices across the state of Texas have a new weapon in this fight against fentanyl, the lethal drug is impacting state agencies across the board. Our law enforcement is being overwhelmed by it, our child protective services and our family courts are being overwhelmed by it, and we've got to make a difference. We've got to control this issue. But for Officer Rutherford and those like him, the effects can ripple beyond the criminal element. With the scare of fentanyl, it's like everything's had to change. Like I can't just walk in the house and go and like grab my kids. Usually before I can touch my kids, I have to go to the shower because you don't know what it is you're taking home. From the DA's perspective, the message regarding fentanyl is clear. We don't need another case to prosecute for a homicide or a domestic violence or any kind of assaulted behavior. We need to turn this community around and get them on a productive path away from the dealers of fentanyl and opioids. For BigCountryHomepage.com, I'm Tobin Smith.